I'm Michael. I'm 58 years old, and I am a hoarder. I spent most of my life collecting rare and pretty things. Even I admit it's way too crowded. I never intended it to get that crowded. I'm Christine, I'm Michael's oldest sister. When I walked into Michael's house, I was absolutely shocked. There was this little space, maybe it wasn't more than a foot wide on the floor. And I'm trying to walk through this little space with picture frames sticking out and books and paper and trash and the smell and the filth. I was mortified. We had a pet rabbit. My father was the main cook of the house, and we came home one day, and he cooked, and uh, we ate dinner, and he asked Michael how did he like that food, and Michael told him, yeah, well, that's good, Dad. And he goes, well, I'm glad you liked that. That was, your, that was your rabbit. I really knew that my father was a monster from that day. That's probably the first time I ever started to look at him as a dark, frightening, murdering bad guy. It just broke Michael's little heart, and I really think that had to have really weighed on Michael mentally. I'm Ken, and I'm Michael's landlord. I only learned uh, from the codes inspector about two months ago that Michael had been living there without electricity and water. I have to determine if it's economically feasible to salvage the house. If I don't get my house cleaned up and cleared out in just a couple of days, I'm going to be evicted, I'm going to lose my dog, I'm going to lose everything. Michael, I'm Matt. My name is Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. Now we're going to try to get in his bedroom where he lives. It's really hot, there's lots of bugs, and there's no light. So we're going with candle. Hopefully the house will not burn down. Here, let me get the food. You carry the candle. Just hold on where I'm holding hold on. Hold on to the walls. See, everything's really piled up on both sides close. But if you hold what I hold, you can get through. Michael knows every inch of that house. He doesn't need lights. He doesn't even really need the candles, because he knows it so well. Your house, man, the minute something catches on fire, it's gone. It's gone, man. Walk right over that box yeah. down there. Okay. Michael's bedroom is the main room. It's really the only room you can walk around in. I'm going to go this way, and you can put a foot on here and sort of lean on me and go up that hole right there. So I'm going to go over you. Hand me the chicken. You hold on to the dinner. Yep. All right, here we go. You ready? Graceful and gracious. All right. So this is home. Yep. And we're not even in here five minutes, and I'm sweating my balls off. Oh. It's, I mean, it's 100 degrees easily. So without the power, uh, it's unlivable. Do you ever eat in this room, in your bedroom? Yes, but I'm very careful with the crumbs and stuff. Okay. I have fought rats, and I have fought mice. And I put so much poison in this house, I had two-inch welts, big red gobs Gubs come up you. everywhere on me. Michael wants to change so badly. Even if we successfully clean, it's not his home. He's not guaranteed that he'll ever get back in. And what a loss that's going to be. What if he follows everything I ask him to do, he gives it his all, and then I have to say, sorry, brother, you're still homeless. This is a tough situation, really tough situation. Everything I got means something to me. Everything I got has some sort of value to it. When you pick things up, pick them up tenderly. I know you got to make haste, but if you can do it with a bit of feeling to it, out of kindness to me, that it means something to me, I like that a lot.
I would say this one is probably okay for the flea market pile. It doesn't have a lot of years on it, maybe 25 or 30 years. My name is Richard Hatch. I've been appraising art and antiques for over 30 years. Yes! Oh, I'm very happy that you've got that. And that stands for Southern Railroad. Very, very, very collectible pricey, and that's probably $250 right there. Who he the is correct. Is it? it is Southern Railroad. And in today's world, realistically, maybe uh, $75 or $100. With the amount of restoration work it needs and a broken speaker, it's probably too far gone to, to salvage. Kind of like watching my children be sorted to be sliced bologna or pressed meat. Either way, it's the destruction of something I love. I'd like it. Can we get moving and getting this on the truck? All right, so this is, you believe, your most valuable piece. Yeah, I think it's a very good painting. OK. Nobody knows what I've got and the value of it. I would like to take this out to Richard, have him look at it. All right, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to have you carry it out there. Let's get out there and have get his expert opinion on it. Good enough. When we got to his prize painting, the other day he had dropped a number of the, thinking that maybe it could be worth hundreds of thousands. I don't know who the painter was. But I took it to the Antique Roadshow art personnel, mm -hmm. and they loved it. And they held it up as the best thing they had seen. And Rudy called it a masterpiece and held it to the cameras. The painting is done in palette knife or in pasto style, you know, a nice impressionistic palette knife work. But as far as value goes, based on th similar things that are sold, I would value it more in the uh, two to three hundred dollar range. I was a little apprehensive of talking about values with Michael. Either way, I'm gonna tell it like it is, I'm not gonna throw out numbers to make you feel good. You all right? There's something spiritual here, I don't know what it is. Well, there's something going on here with your dad. I don't know where to take it. I'm Dr. Melva Green. I'm a board certified psychiatrist specializing in anxiety disorders and hoarding behaviors. Michael has spent his entire life trying to measure up to what his father wanted. A lot of this hoarding has really been about seeking that validation that he was hoping for with his dad. So to get into the heart of where this behavior began, you could actually get him on a road to recovery. When I'm doing whatever I'm doing, I'm honoring my father in the memory. That was my question. That's what I'm doing. That was my it's question. It's like he was standing here with me. Would he do it like this? Would he want me to do it like this? Is he proud of me now, or is he not proud of me right now? So are you a hoarder, or are you just honoring your father? I'm a hoarder. Are you also honoring your father the best way you know how? If my dad had been there, he'd have been kicking me in the ass and smacking me on the back of the head and saying to me, you're an idiot. You know you're an idiot. How much? How long can you fool yourself? And I'm, I'm getting personal with my personal experience. My dad died 10 years ago. Some of my dad was good, some of my dad was bad. And I can't spend the rest of my life trying to make my dad happy. Come on. Our hunch with Michael is that it wasn't about the cash. Michael wants to be like his father. What boy doesn't want to be like their father? You're really close to saying, man, life ain't worth it. Get rid of this stuff. I feel that. Aldo's gone, OK? Good call. All right, the rest of this I can sell? Take it. OK. Bundle it up and let it go. I have to. That's why I'm doing this. Michael was ready to start his life back over in this home. But we still had an enormous amount of work to do today. We still had to clean three entire rooms and get the house ready for an inspector.
everybody came in, we busted out, we were fixing holes, we were putting new fridges in, we were putting microwaves in, I'm doing plumbing. I've never even done plumbing in my life, and I'm sitting here trying to put a, a faucet in just so I can get him back in the house. With the list that we have today, we're dealing with the habitability of the structure. Uh, if we can get primarily the repair of the ceiling fixed in a, in a week or two, then I don't have a problem with the conditional occupancy. But it, it's, it's an agreement that you really need to make. And if that's what you want to do, uh, you know, we can accommodate it. I couldn't evaluate it at all, you know, until I saw it uh, cleared out. So I think it can be done. The whole thing has got to be yep. re-shingled, you know, in, in my opinion, as soon as possible. County came in, they gave me the plaque, told me to rip it up. All right. You are not homeless, my friend. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. It all paid off. It all paid off, man. I think that Michael and the homeowner are going to be able to fix this roof issue and actually keep Michael in here long term. I want you to see your new house, because finally, again, this is your house. I say something about her. Come on, let's we'll get to it. We want to show you your house. <laughs> Do it. Wow. <laughs> that is just so oh. nice. Wow. All right. oh, but look at this, Michael. Isn't that beautiful? The couch yeah. and the, I know. the rug I'm and the gorgeous. Just, I can't, uh, can't wow. take it all in, no, can you? I can't too express much. it. How do you all know to pick it out like this and wow. do all this? I mean, you're like an angel. <laughs> we got a new refrigerator, got a brand new microwave, and guess what? The AC works. You're kidding. We couldn't believe it either. Get out of here. Let's we all take our clothes off. Turn the AC on. <laughs> wow. Come on this way. Wow. 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 Stuff for basil. Look at basil stuff. Oh, man. Michael has spent a lifetime trying to live up to a father that he just could never measure up to. Maybe now, with a fresh start, he won't be defining himself by a relationship of what if. I think Michael working so hard to detach himself from these things that were his treasures may make him realize, I'm not a failure after all. I, I can stand on my own two feet. It's like a huge weight is lifted off my chest and I can breathe. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.